Welcome to Woggle Guides. In this guide, I'll explain how to use Gmail to carry out a bulk email send to a large number of email recipients using a mail merge process. If you want to send an email newsletter, a family letter, or a personalized thank you email to friends or colleagues, mail merge is a really useful way to send personalized emails to each email recipient. In this guide, I'll explain how to set up and personalize a bulk email using Gmail and Google Sheets. A quick health warning on the mail merge message I'll share with you. It is entirely free, but you can only send a maximum of 100 emails per day. Now, if you want to send more than 100 emails using this mail merge method, you can split it up and send it over multiple days. But depending on the number of emails you want to send, that can take a little time and effort. If you are working with large numbers of email addresses, I'd also suggest you consider looking at the range of Gmail add-ons for mail merge that do allow you to send more emails per day. Many of these do offer free trials, but are not free to use once the trial ends. And it's also worth pointing out that many of the basic paid packages also limit the emails you can send per day to a maximum of around 400. Don't forget, you can click on any section below to go straight to the part of the guide that interests you the most. Please do subscribe if you like what you see, so we can let you know when new guides are published. So let's start by explaining how mail merge actually works. Mail merge can seem a bit scary, but it's really straightforward and once you understand some simple ideas, you'll also see it's really quick to do. Mail merge works on the principle of substitution of information. So what does that mean? Well, let's say you want to write an email and you choose to start the email with the person's first name. Hi Alice. But then instead of putting in their actual name, what if we add a placeholder that represents their name? So instead of Hi Alice, we would write Hi First Name. And First Name represents all the first names that we want to write to. I'll show you in the next section of the guide how we create the list of personalized information for each email recipient that we can then use in our mail merge emails. There's one more important thing to share before we move on. In order for the mail merge to recognize that a piece of information in the email is a personalization placeholder and not just a normal part of the email, we need to identify that piece of information using special characters. A special character is just a symbol that you use from your keyboard that isn't a number or a letter, but which you can use to represent something else. In this case, a piece of mail merge personalized information. To show that first name is a placeholder that we want to use in our email, we need to surround it with two curly brackets on each side of the placeholder, like this. The curly bracket can usually be found on the same key as the square bracket, and you can add it to your email by pressing shift and square bracket key together. Let's now move on to look at how we use the curly bracket to highlight words in the draft of our mail merge email. We're in Gmail. Let's draft a new email. We do this by clicking on the compose an email icon in the top left of the inbox, and you'll see a new email window open. This will be the email we use as a template for the mail merge email we plan to send. I'll quickly write a standard holiday greetings email I want to send to the Woggle Spy Network guide. For now, I won't use any of the special characters we discussed in the last section of the guide, but we'll insert these once we're happy with the email we want to send. I now want to personalize some parts of the email that I'll use with the mail merge to give a different special message to individuals. Let's start with the subject or title of the email. Rather than adding in a specific family name, I want to add in a mail merge placeholder. I do this by highlighting the text I want to replace. And remember, we add a keyword within two special curly bracket characters on either side to indicate that this is the text to be replaced. Let's do that now by adding the special keyword last name with the curly brackets. Let's add one more. We'll change the first name of the email recipient. I'll highlight the text and once again, I'll add the mail merge keyword inside the special curly brackets characters. Let's quickly make the same changes to a number of other pieces of text in the email. And now our draft email that we'll use for the mail merge is complete. Let's now move to Google Sheets and we'll look at how to set up the mail merge list with your contact details and personalized text you want to use in your emails. To 
set up the contact information, we need to add it to a spreadsheet in Google Sheets. This sheet was created by Martin Hoxie and contains all the clever stuff you need to send your mail merged emails. It's actually recommended by the Google Workspace team, so it's perfectly safe to use. You'll find some links in the description for this guide that explain some more about how the sheet works and where you can download and make a copy of the sheet. Let's download it now. If we visit Martin Hoxie's blog page, let's scroll down and click on the link for the Gmail Sheets Mail Merge Spreadsheet. You're then given an option to download a copy of the Google Sheet. To do that, let's click on the blue Make a Copy button. The Mail Merge Spreadsheet then opens in Google Sheets. This sheet is now saved in your own version of Google Sheets. The link for the blog page and the download video for the Mail Sheet can be found in the description for this video. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet. You'll see that there are a number of columns in the sheet that have been pre-populated with contact information. We'll start by selecting all of that information and I'll press the delete key to remove it. Let's take a look at the columns in the spreadsheet. Each of these columns relates to a piece of information in an email that we want to replace. At present it has the standard types of columns you'd expect to see, such as first name, last name, recipient, that sort of thing. The next job for us is to tailor the spreadsheet so it matches the mail merge placeholders we've added in our original template email. Before we do that, it's important to point out the two columns should not be removed or altered in any way. If you do this, the mail merge will not work. The first of these, recipient, is for you to capture the email address that you want to send your email to. And the second column not to change is email sent, which is used to store the date and time the email was sent when you actually run the mail merge. Let's flip back to Gmail and remind ourselves of the mail merge data items we've set up in the email. We had last name, first name, personal greeting, family details, and personal sign off. Let's now go back to Google Sheets. I want to change the title of the columns in the sheet to be the same as our mail merge placeholders. Let's change each of the column headings, left to right now. You'll note that we don't need to add the curly brackets to the spreadsheet. Remember, you also need to be careful not to make any changes to the recipient or email sent columns. Now that we've made our changes, our mail merge template is complete and we're ready to run our mail merge. Before we do that, however, I recommend you send a test email to yourself to make sure the mail merge is working as you expect. To do that, we need to start by adding the contact information we want to use in our draft email template. So I'll add Woggle's last name, first name and their email address and the details of their family and finally a sign off for the email. So the contact details we want to add to our test mail merge email is now complete. Let's go through the steps to merge this content with our draft email. You'll see there's a mail merge option on the menu bar of the Google Sheet. Let's click on that now and you can see that that then displays an option to send emails. Let's choose that. Because this is the first time we've used the mail merge feature, we're then asked to authorize it just like you would do with the Gmail add-on or a Chrome extension. To do that, click Continue. If you have a number of Google accounts set up, you may be asked to choose which Google account you want to use with the Mail Merge feature. If you only have one Google account, this step will be skipped. The next step gives you a warning that the developer, in this case you, hasn't verified the app. Google thinks you've developed the Mail Merge app because you've taken a copy of the original, but it's perfectly safe to use for the Mail Merge. To move forward, click on the advanced link which shows some further options. Let's choose the go to Gmail sheet mail merge link. This final step then asks for explicit approval to send email on your behalf and to read information from a Google spreadsheet. Let's click on the large allow button to proceed. So the mail merge app is now authorized for use. Let's now send our test email. We'll return to the mail merge option in the top menu bar and let's choose send emails again. We're now asked to provide the subject or title of the email we want to use for our mail merge. If we return to Gmail, you'll see our template email. I'm going to select the title of the email, right click on it and choose copy. I can now close this email as a copy will be saved in our drafts folder. Let's now go back to our mail merge sheet in Google Sheets. I'll right click and paste in the subject we've just copied. And finally, I'll click OK to run the mail merge. The mail merge may take a little time to run, but you'll know that it is completed successfully when the email sent column is populated with a sent date and time for your email. Let's quickly hop back to Gmail and take a look at what was received. 
you'll see that the original placeholder text has been replaced with what I added to the spreadsheet. The problems to watch out for here are where spaces may not have been added, or any missing full stops or other punctuation errors. Based on our test, we can now make any final tweaks to the email template before sending out the final mail merge. So we're back in Google Sheets. I'm going to remove the test details we added to the mail merge sheet. It's worth noting that if you want to send repeat emails to the same group of people, all you need to do is clear the contents of the email sent column, and then that sheet can be reused for a new mail merge one. Let's blank out the sheet by deleting all the information currently on. I'm now going to add the information for my contact list. I've kept the distribution list short for this mail merge, but you can add any number of contacts and personalised information. Remember that Gmail only allows you to send a maximum of 100 emails per day however, so if you need to send more than that number, you'll need to split the email list up in blocks of 100 users and send it over a number of days. And now we're good to go. To send a mail merge email, I'll choose mail merge from the top row and click on send emails. I'll then paste in the subject line of our email and click OK to send emails. The mail merge runs and you'll know it's completed successfully when the email sent date has been added to the Google Sheet. If we pop back into Gmail, you'll see the emails have been sent out each with a different email address and personalised content. I hope you found this Woggle Guide useful and learned something new. If you have, please like or subscribe so other users can find it too. Thanks for watching and do look after yourself until next time.